Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in this video, I want to talk about Amp Sims. So Amp Sim is short for Amp Simulation Software. So what I mean by that is you can take your guitar, you can plug it into your computer, and it's going to function as an amp. So not only the amp, but you have the amp, you have the cabinet, you have any pedals, any effects, all that stuff. It's all done right in your computer. That's the Amp Simulation Software. So don't get me wrong, I love tube amps. I love playing live gigs with tube amps. I gigged for 15 years using my Marshall JCM 2000. Um, I am a diehard tube amp fan. But for at home practice, if I wanna play as loud as I want, well, to, to an extent, you know, in my headphones, I can do that, I can play all night long. Um, I can also jam along with backing tracks and uh, you know control the level of my guitar in uh, you know in accordance with the backing track and it actually sounds like I'm playing like it actually sounds like a, an actual song's playing that I'm part of it's all going on in my head and I'm just jamming along it's an amazing thing I did five original songs on this YouTube channel here each of those five songs were 100 percent done using amp simulation software so I don't even really use an amp when I'm at home I only use amps when I am out gigging so I love these things they're that good Maybe you'll like them too. I'm going to explain to you how to set them up, how to use them in this video. So the first thing you're going to need is going to be an interface. So what you see here, this is an interface. This is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. This is the one that I use. This one allows you to plug two microphones in or two guitars in or one microphone and one guitar in at the same time. So they do have a cheaper model and that allows you that has one microphone input and one guitar input so that may suit your needs better it's a little cheaper i'll post the links to both models below um, so i prefer this one because sometimes i do have two microphones going at the same time um, so yeah i like the 2i2 model so let me just quickly explain to you what all these uh, knobs and stuff do before moving on because i know that when i first got an interface a few years ago i was a bit confused even though it seems like it's pretty obvious of what everything does and it is to me now when i first got it i was a little confused at how everything worked so let me just run you through all the uh, controls so all the way on the right you have your headphone control knob that's the uh, volume for your headphones then the little jack that you see right there that's where you actually plug your headphones in so you can do everything through headphones. You can listen to everything that you're doing through headphones. That's what I do 99.9% .9 of the time. I just have my headphones on. I'm jamming. If it's too loud or whatever, the volume knob is right here. Everything is controlled right there. The big knob that you see just to the left of that, that's the monitor volume. So your monitors, they plug into these two jacks in the back. One's left, one is right. The monitors that I use are the KRK uh, Generation 7. I believe they're... I believe it's Generation 7, but I use KRK monitors. I'll post a link to those below too if you want. Really nice sounding uh, studio monitors. So you control the volume of what's coming out of the monitors using this big knob that says monitor on it. So you don't have to have monitors in order to do this stuff. You can just do everything through headphones, but I like to have monitors. It's They're good for mixing. They're good for... They're just useful to have in a studio. So that's how you control the monitors. And then moving further to the left, you have your gain knobs. So that's the input gain. So if you're using channel one, this is going to be your gain knob for channel one. If you're using input two, this is your gain knob. So that's just how much signal you're allowing into the interface. So when you're using amp sims, you want this gain knob to be down almost all the way. Sometimes you can even have it all the way down. So if, you, if the signal is too strong, it's going to turn red. There's a green light and a red light. So a green light when you play is going to indicate letting you know that signal is coming in. If the signal is coming in too hot, the green light is going to turn red. So you want to turn this gain knob all the way down so that you can play as loud as you think you're going to play and it doesn't make that thing go red. So turn these down, have your input signal going in nice and clean. You can always increase the volume within the computer or you know, using your headphone volume knob if you want to hear yourself louder. All right, so right here the program is open as a standalone application. What I mean by standalone application means you just download whatever amp sim you're using, open it up, the window pops up, then you just plug your guitar into the uh, interface, and that's it. You listen to yourself through either headphones or your studio monitors, and that's all that. That's the only setup required. So. This is the standalone application. It looks like this. The program I'm using is called S Gear. I love S Gear because it has everything that you need and it's all just in one package. 
So I bought this for 129 bucks about two years ago, and you don't have to buy anything else. Some of these amp simulation companies, you have to buy, you know, this pedal and that pedal or whatever, and you have to keep buying stuff to get the tone that you want. With S Gear, you just pay the one-time fee of 100 bucks or 129 bucks, and you get the, uh, you know, you get the program, and that's it. So I'm not endorsed by S Gear. I make no money by giving a recommendation for that company. I'm just, this is an unbiased review, unbiased recommendation based on what I've, you know, learned about AmpSim software. So with that said, I love S Gear. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so what I do is I usually just, uh, I pick a preset here and uh, then I just kind of tweak stuff until I find the tone I want. So you can get to your presets by clicking here. And a lot of these presets are named after uh, famous artists. So you have Blue Claptonite after Clapton, BB, Blues, BB King, Stevie Ray, or Steely Ray, um, Sultans of Tweed, Sultans Lead, things like that. So I usually like to start off with this uh, 61 right here, Stolen Clean. And that one sounds like this. <laughs> Pretty nice clean tone. So, let me see here. Um, you can uh, choose different amps. There's five different amps with this one. So you can right click right here and select amp. So you have the Duke. You have the Jackal. You have Wayfarer. Custom 57. So we'll just keep it on this uh, this one. I, I think this is modeling a Marshall. That's what this one's supposed to be. So let me just kind of like mess around with some stuff so you can hear how, how this... Uh So right now there's uh, a lot of delay going on, and that's because of this delay thing that's part of this preset. So I can uh, I can either remove this by right-clicking and clicking Remove Device, or I can just hit this X here. So the delay will still remain in the chain. It just it's bypassed now. So now you're. Uh <laughs> So I'm going to turn delay back on, and I'm going to just turn things down. So you have a slow, medium, or short, medium, and long. So th this is milliseconds right here. You can also uh, set your delay to the exact tempo that you want by clicking in here, and it'll set it to different patterns, triplet patterns, quarter notes, eighth notes, you know, half notes, things like that. I'm just going to kind of put it on a medium setting. Set the delay to 300 milliseconds. The stereo width that's bouncing back and forth between uh, left and right. So I'm just going to put it all the way down to zero. So let's hear how this delay sounds now. So uh, let me make that a little longer. kind of a cool delay sound um, it seems like it needs some reverb now too so you can add reverb so you can click in this blank space right click add device so room thing is going to be a reverb unit so I don't even really touch these knobs because this has so many presets so if you want to just uh, select a reverb preset click right here so medium hall cathedral let's see how that sounds pretty cool um, there's this heaven setting down here I like that one a lot let me actually turn some of this gain down now get back to a little cleaner tone <laughs> That's kind of a cool sound. So, um, yeah, and then it has, uh, you can add, what is it, 
mod thing. So that's going to be your cores and flange. So you can move these things around to whatever order you want them in. All right, so let me just put. Uh, I'm actually going to turn, or I'm going to bypass the reverb. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the delay way down, and then I'm going to turn all this stuff up here. So let me just crank all this stuff up. Let's see how this sounds. <laughs> So this is really where I like to use these things. I really like to use uh, amp simulators within a DAW. So a DAW is a digital audio workstation. The one that I'm using here is called Reaper. Reaper is a $60 program. It comes with a 60-day free trial. After the free trial is over, you don't even have to pay for the program if you don't want to. The program will still work 100% fully functional forever. It'll just keep reminding you that you should pay the 60 bucks. In my opinion, 60 bucks for a program like this is absolutely a steal. So with that said, this is Reaper. I'm inside Reaper. I have three tracks here. This is the lead guitar track. This is the uh, mic track, which I'm actually recording through a separate software right now for this video. So nothing's coming up on this mic track. Um, but then this is the backing track. So uh, the backing track, in order to import a backing track into a doll, you're just going to have to come to Insert, Media File, and you just kind of navigate to wherever it is. Here it is, backing track. And then that'll come up right there. That's your uh, backing track. And here is the lead guitar track. So the, co the cool thing about working with these things in a DAW is that here it is right here. You can alter the tone of the recording after the recording has already been laid down. So let me play this for you real quick. <laughs> So let's say I want uh, a clean tone as my lead guitar tone. Let's say I want a really high gain type of tone. Let me see. Some of these are high gain. Sonoma Lead 2. I think that's a high gain. So let me go back to Heaven. I like that tone. So if I want this as my preset, I can just start tweaking the tone to get it exactly how I want. So I start here, and then I might just want to kind of, you know, tweak some of these buttons and stuff like that. I got some crazy delays going on here. Uh, let me just kind of get it back to where it was before. I'll just click on something else, and then I'll come back to heaven. That way it's set back to the actual preset. I didn't save anything. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm altering the tone after it's already been recorded. So that's one of the benefits that uh, you have with working within a doll. You can do that. But, you know, also, you know, just the fact that you can jam along with the backing track. So... This is already on there, so this is applied as an effects, an amp simulator, like S Gear Amp Sim is considered an effect on a track. So you have an you have a track. This track doesn't have any effects on it. This track doesn't have any effects on it. This track has an effects on it. It's the S Gear Amp Sim effect. So let me make a new track here. You double click out here to make a new track, and so in order to hear the new track, if I try and strum the guitar. You're not going to hear anything. Um, I have to make sure that this is armed for recording. 
and I have to make sure that record monitoring is on. That's off, that's on. So you still can't hear anything because it doesn't have an effect on it, it doesn't have the amp sim on it. So I click here, and I have to make sure that I go to VST, and then I'm going to find S gear right here. I'm going to show you how to get that in there coming up in this video. So there's S gear right there. So now S gear is now on this track now. So. so in order to hear the uh, guitar effect, you have to make sure that this is on. If this is not, if record armed is not on, you're not going to hear it. So you should turn this on. If you don't have uh, record monitoring on, you're also not going to be able to hear it. So you have to make sure that this is on, record armed, and monitoring is on. You're also going to have to make sure that uh, you know you have the effect on the track, which is indicated by this green, showing you that here's S gear. So the cool thing about this is now this track is armed for recording. So when I go to actually record something, or I could just play along. I don't even have to record something. Let me just play along. So you're only if I play right now, you're going to hear this. Just play. <laughs> So now I can jam along with this and this now. So let's do that. So now I'm jamming along with that. So I can keep adding as many tracks as I want. I can keep layering this and layering this. I just have to keep adding new tracks. And whichever track is the um, the active track at the moment is going to be the one that has record armed on. So if record armed is not on, then the other ones are just going to play. So it's a bit of a learning curve getting used to working within a doll, but it's really not that hard. So it's really cool though. So the fact that you can alter your tone after the recording track has already been laid down, the fact that you can jam with multiple tracks and just keep layering and layering and layering, that's the benefit of working with inside of, within a doll. So you want to make sure that you know how to uh, get Reaper to read the S-Gear program, and uh, that's you just have to basically specify where in your computer that the uh, S-Gear program is saved to. So when you first download S-Gear, it's going to go to um, the C drive, program files and you're going to find it down here in this Steinberg you're also going to find it here in Scuffum Amps because that's the name of the company that makes S gear but uh, you're going to find it in Steinberg as well it, it automatically is going to uh, make this folder for you so Steinberg VST plugins and here it is here S gear so you can see I have a bunch of other plugins that I've previously downloaded every time you want to add a new plugin into Reaper it's going to go into this folder here so S gear is right there. That's the file that we need to specify within Reaper. So you do that by going to Options, Preferences, and then you come down until you get to Plugins, VST, and then you just specify the file path right up here. You can have multiple different file paths up here. Wherever you have VST plugins on your computer, you can have multiple folders. Just separate each path with a semicolon, as you can see there. So right here, this is the one that I just told you about. So C, Program Files, Steinberg, VST Plugins. Once you have that in there, you just say OK. You can even hit Rescan. And once that's there, then when you open up your effects window, and you go to Add an Effect, and you go to VST, All Plugins, VST, you're going to see S gear come up. So until you specify that file path where S gear is in, you're not going to see it in here. Once you do, you know, it's going to come up in here. So that's that's basically just how you get Reaper to read, uh, you know, Reaper and S gear to connect with one another. So it's that one additional step that you're going to have to do in order to work within a doll. If you're just using S gear as a uh, standalone app, you don't have to do any of that stuff. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video is impulse responses. So what an impulse response is, or IR for short, is it's a combination of the cabinet, the speaker, the microphone, and the microphone placement in relation to the speaker. So all that stuff affects the tone that you hear in a recording. So all of it's, it's, it's all simulated stuff, but it's very, very accurate to the real thing.
So if you're familiar with recording guitar tones and stuff like that, you know that if you have a mic and you angle the mic differently, or if you move the mic an inch to the left or right, or you move the mic back, or you use a different type of mic, all that stuff affects the tone. The cabinet affects the tone. I'm sure you know that just if you're used to playing through different amps and stuff like that. The cabinet has a huge effect on the tone. So that's all part of this impulse response thing. So um, with S-Gear, it has this whole impulse response thing built in. If you're going to use one of the free amp simulators, a lot of times you're just going to get the amp portion. And you're going to have to also get an impulse response uh, loader. It's called an IR loader. So if you're going to go the free route, you're going to have to do a little bit more work to kind of get the amp, get the cabinet, put it all together. When you use S-Gear, it's all in one unit. So let me show you what I mean. So open this up right here. This is your uh, IR section. So you can choose your different uh, cabinets just by clicking on that. So this actually has one cab and two cabs. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with one cabinet here just so you can hear the different possibilities. So let me uh, select the tone Plex Monster. Let me, uh, I'm going to bypass delay because I just want a nice dry tone. Alright, so nice dry tone. It has a little bit of reverb on there, but it's very subtle. Uh, so let's hear all the different uh, cabinets sound. So I'm going to start off by this 112. So you can hear that just by uh, selecting different cabinets, it has different effects on the tone. You can then select uh, the microphone right here. You have three, three different mics to choose from. So dynamic, microphone, uh, ribbon 100, ribbon 121. And then right here, this is the microphone in relation to the speaker. So just moving this around is really going to affect your tone. So you can see all these things, that's all the impulse response. So that's a huge... Um, that's a huge portion of your tone right there. So that I was just messing around with one cabinet. You actually have two cabinets. Um, you can slave them together. If you make it slaved, I think that means that this one cabinet IR is feeding cabinet one and cabinet two. So, or you can just turn cabinet two off altogether, or you can leave both cabinets on. So that's all the built-in IRs uh, in S-Gear. So there's a bunch of them in there. So you can actually import your own too. So you can buy an IR pack online, which will come with maybe like 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, a, a bunch of individual IRs, like a combination of, of a uh, speaker plus a microphone plus the microphone placement. It'll be like the IR will be for a specific cab. So I actually bought one for the Orange 212 because that was the amp that, or that was the cabinet that I used for uh, live gigging for about 15 years. So uh, in order to get them in, you just come to uh, impulses right here, and you can just import them. So import. So I have my IRs stored in a folder called Impulse Responses, and here's one pack. Here's another pack. So I actually have three different pack or four different packs here. So this is the pack I bought online for 10 bucks. And it comes with uh, a bunch of files. So you just import this folder, and they'll show up here. So I have a bunch of different IRs to choose from. So I'm not even going to go and demonstrate these because I really don't. I like the ones that are built into S-Gear better than this specific pack. So, But people swear by IRs. People swear by these IR packs. There's tons and tons and tons of IR stuff out there. So read about them. 
people swear that like the tone is like 90% a result of the impulse response and only like 10% from the actual amp. So I don't know how much the actual amp constitutes towards the tone versus the actual, uh, you know, the IR portion of the tone. Everything is kind of just in S gear in its stock form is good enough for me. But people swear by these IR packs, so that may be something you may want to dive into if you're really into, uh, you know, searching for s specific tones. So lots of stuff out there. So yeah, it's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. See you next time. <laughs>